started because, great, I got it. Um, because it's past six. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for coming tonight to the Dorchester Park Pathways Tree Community Meeting. This is our fourth meeting for this project. Um, it's the Boston Parks Recreation Department's first tree only community meeting. I'm Nellie Ward. I use they, them pronouns. I took the project over from Lauren Bryant in August 2023 when I joined the team at Parks. And since then, I've been working with her um, to get the project running along with RDLA, our great design team, um, to get this project going. And I will be your point of contact through construction. Um, I'd like to thank you for coming. And we know that you all have busy schedules and we really appreciate the time that you're giving from your schedule to join us. I'd like to welcome any elected officials, officials who might be on the call and ask you to raise your hand if you'd like to say anything at this time. Anybody out there? Nope, all right. So just to note that this meeting is being recorded and that's so we can post it on the project webpage. Um, we'll also post notes from this meeting and um, we'll, I'll provide a link to the project webpage in the chat. I think Shauna's going to handle that for us. And that way, it, it's going to be up in about a week. You can share this presentation with neighbors who are able to attend um, and review it yourself. So um, virtual meeting etiquette. So we want to just make sure everybody's voice is heard. We do have everybody set to be muted at the beginning, um, but you can go ahead and turn your mic on at the listening and discussion session when we'll have um, time and space to, to discuss. Um, you're welcome to turn your video on. We'd love to see everyone's faces. Um, please be respectful of everybody's thoughts and feelings. And um, we hope that you feel comfortable sharing any questions or comments in the chat or at the end of the presentation verbally. But if not, you can also email me or any of the other folks um, who are points of contact for this project directly. And um, Shauna, if you could pop my email in the chat, that would be great. So Zoom tips. Um, we do ask that questions are held to the end. Um, if it feels Pressing, you can add a question to the chat as we go through the presentation and we'll address those during the listening and discussion session. Um, we'll address the comments in the order that they come in. If you're calling in on a phone, you have to um, press star nine. And then once we call on you, you can press star six to unmute yourself. And on Zoom, um, it helps to use the raise the hand um, feature so that um, Shauna can help call on you if you have a question. All right. Let's see, how do we make this guy go away? Put it down here. Right. So um, agenda. So we'll talk through the project team, um, just who people are, who've been involved, and then we'll go over the schedule where we're at in this process. Talk about upcoming tree removals at Dorchester Park and the, the different kinds of tree removals that are happening at Dorchester Park. Some are related to this project and some are not, um, but I want to just clarify that. And then we'll have a listing discussion and uh, next steps. Great. So on our project team, me, Nellie Ward, project manager from Boston Parks Department, um, we also have um, Liza Meyer from the Boston Parks Department, our chief landscape architect on the call. And we have Todd Mister, um, who is the director of the Urban Forestry Department on the call. Thanks so much for joining guys. Um, our wonderful landscape designer for this project is Ray Dunitz, um, RDLA. And we're grateful for all of their work. Um, and then Madison Foley, who I don't believe is here, is our um, Office of Neighborhood and Services representative. She might be popping in and out of this meeting. I know she had another meeting tonight. Um, and then Shauna, our wonderful graphic arts technician, is moderating the meeting for us tonight. Um, so that's who we all are here. All righty, project schedule. 
So we've had, um, as I said, this is the fourth meeting, community meeting we've had. Um, for those of you who are new to the project, if any of you are new, this is a park pathways project. So it's different than our typical park renovations project. Um, a pathways project is really specifically directed towards paths um, and paving and accessibility. So the budget for pathways project typically doesn't include things like renovations to seating, site furnishings, lighting, new planting, playgrounds, sports courts that are typically part of like a full uh, park renovation project. Um, this project was flagged because this park was flagged because there were some you know, a lot of paving problems and a lot of accessibility issues. And um, the community, we heard from several members in the community that we needed better access to the existing programming in the park and, um, you know, making it more, the park more equally accessible to people in wheelchairs and less able-bodied folks. So that's the kind of like scope and goal of this project. Um, we have had three community meetings so far and the community saw the proposed accessibility imp uh, improvements and gave feedback on which pathways and uh, entrances were most important. Um, then we did some series of cost estimates for the project and um, recognized that we had to secure more funding for the, for the pathways. So we got an additional $500,000 from City Hall, which was great to help us get some of our, some more accessibility improvements incorporated into the set. We got a variance from the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board to be able to, um, to be able to provide the connections that we could and to be able to um, be okay with some of the connections that we weren't accessible uh, routes that we weren't able to do because of limited budget. So now we're actually in the middle of 60% um, construction drawings, that's kind of like the next phase of the project after community engagement. But um, there's a new tree ordinance where it's important for us to make the community aware that there are trees that will be removed um, because of the improvements that are being uh, proposed and designed. And so that's what the purpose of this meeting is. So it's really to let you know which trees are being affected by the pathway improvements. Um, so if all go, goes according to plan, we um, hope to have the bid documents or the construction documents wrapped up winter this winter um, and in the spring, oops, and in the spring have bidding and awarding of a contract. And then from there, if all goes according to plan, we'll have nine to 12 months of construction uh, before the park opens. How do I make this guy go away? Whoops. Does anybody know out there? Let's see. What is it, Nellie? Because we don't see something that you- Oh, you don't? You don't no. see this bar? Oh, okay, no. great. Oh, that's great. I was thinking it was covering up stuff. Okay, oh, and I forgot- I to keep covering it. it for you, but we're good. Okay, thanks, Liza. Sure. Um, and just to point out the one thing I didn't say, which is this green, um, this green section, which is really, it's not, a part of this project, but the Urban Forestry Department will be doing tree removals this November through next year. Um, and we'll come back to this, but I just wanted to let you know that that's overlapping with this existing other project that's a Pathways Improvement Project. So we'll come back to that. All right, so I'll overview of upcoming tree removals. So as I said, there's two types of removals that are happening. There's type one is trees that are being removed for canopy health and management. And those are trees that require removal as determined by the city of Boston tree warden to be dead, um, dying, diseased, or posing a risk to persons or property um, or are classified as an invasive species or for the suppression of pests. So those are, there's a lot of trees that will be affected by those um, that fall into that category that are not at all um, part of the pathway improvements project. Um, that those are going to be addressed by the urban forestry department. And then the trees that are the type two trees are the trees that are being removed for accessibility and design. 
And those are trees that um, may be impacted as a result of construction or they're, um, you know, they conflict with a pathway. Um, grade, that could include grading, subsurface conditions um, to make the park more accessible and to improve circulation. So we're gonna go over both types of trees, tree removals. So we had a very thorough report done um, by Bartlett tree experts um, to assess and document trees that were within 15 feet of all the pathways in the park. Um, those trees have been identified and flagged. And we actually, um, the, the parks team the, and, and um, our DLA, our designer, went actually through the park with Max Ford Diamond, the city of Boston tree warden to confirm those removals and decide whether we needed to, some of them we decided to keep and some of them we decided um, really needed to go. So the, the urban forestry department is handling those separately. Um, and here's a couple pictures of trees that you might think look okay, but when you look closely have big cavities or big central leaders and have some kind of major issue that could pose some kind of um, some some kind of um, health issue to the canopy of the of the existing forest. Um, so then the second type of trees are really the trees that are related to this project. To review what we've already gone over, we have um, in, in the past uh, past community meetings, we will be repaving um, the, the proposed improvements include um, repaving the existing asphalt and then providing new ramps at locations that are critical to allow accessibility, accessible entrances from key residential areas. Um, we also wanted to make sure that park program was accessible from, from these different points around the park. And so what you're looking at here is really a materials map. And then um, one thing to note is that we may not be able to afford all of these improvements, although we really are going to try. Um, it depends on how the bids come in. And so if the project exceeds the existing construction budget, when we go out to bid, it's possible that this one area down here would be a secondary bu budget focus area that might not be included in the park renovation. And that's important to know just because that would also affect which trees were removed. So looking at this map, this kind of shows you what the proposed accessibility is for this for the site. And if you look back at this existing conditions accessibility diagram, all of the red shows you where you didn't have an accessible connection. So really, if you're in a wheelchair um, or you're less able-bodied, these red patches really interrupt your ability to get through the park. And so the proposed um, regrading and repaving allows much more connection throughout the park. And the repaving and the regrading obviously affects the adjacent trees. <clears throat> so if we look at just the trees that are affected by those improvements, we have two areas really where we're gonna have to um, remove some trees where we, where we most likely will have to remove some trees um, or the trees will, have, will not survive construction and may need to be removed. We're gonna try to save as many trees as possible. Um, we, love par we love trees at parks and we know that trees are very important to the community and that they're very important to urban environment and climate resilience and protecting trees is um, a major goal of the parks department, but it just sometimes there are conflicts with the community needs that we have to fight the bullet and remove a, a couple that we really um, would love to keep otherwise. <clears throat> so we're gonna review those trees together. Anybody need to jump in on anything yet? Nope, okay. <laughs> Great, so just for folks who might not be as familiar with construction, 
when you have a tree right next to a path that you have to put um, a, a, some kind of ramp or walkway in, you are have a conflict below grade that you might not see. So even though the path might not be exactly uh, like on top of a tree, just being in the critical root zone, which is the area that is the, the tree is most vulnerable to, um, will can cause the tree to die and or to suffer and be stressed over time and and to die. And so um, what we need to do, what we really wanna do is to try to maximize protection measures with our contractor to make sure that we're protecting as many tree roots as possible. But there are just, um, and there's different ways of doing that in the design documents. But there are just some cases where we know that if we have to build a ramp right next to a big tree, it's most likely not gonna make it. <laughs> so um, we've identified those trees for this presentation that, that really seem like there's a conflict. So this is over by the existing ball field. You have Richview Street up here. Um, as you saw in the plan, the overall plan, there is a new um, walkway that connects to Hutchinson that comes around the back of the ball field to the bottom of the existing stairs um, and then wraps around and connects to Richview. And to the top of this kind of central walkway that comes in off of Adam Street, um, and so the proposal is to have a, a walkway, an accessible, accessible walkway and ramp that comes up behind the existing stone wall and then connects in to the pathway system, which will lead you to the courts. So in doing so, there is a dense forested area here where some existing trees will need to be removed. If we look at those trees a little closer, um, these are the these are the trees that that are in that area. There's these are um, the the ones that are closest to the top of the stairs. We have a black oak. Um, we have a couple. I guess these ones are all black oaks. Um, you've probably not seen these trees up close and personal because they are surrounded densely by poison ivy and other very prickly shrubs. Um, and then on the other at the other end of the ramp, we have four more trees. So um, these trees are also very densely surrounded by poison ivy and, um, and shrubs right now. Uh, okay, so hopping over to basically like the playground area. So this is play, the playground up here and down here is Richmond Street. Um, so this is the new entrance that we're proposing to try to make more accessible. Um, we have a new ramp that will require some regrading that goes right behind um, a big a big tree over here. It's a black oak and then comes up. And then we have another ramp that will um, that's very close to the path that will like will impact tree 32 and tree uh, 33. Although we would really, really like to save those and we're gonna try everything we can to make sure that we minimize impacts and try to protect them. But because there is a risk, we want to present these trees to you too as trees that potentially might need to be removed for these accessibility improvements. Okay, so if we look at um, the overall possible tree removals, we see the those three trees that we talked about over by Richmond and the other seven trees we talked about over by the existing ball field. Um, and then the green dots are trees that were identified in that report for either um, some kind of tree health um, treatment, something to improve the, 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 the existing canopy or and or a removal. And while we have a plan of these trees, this is not something that the urban forestry department is gonna come in and just do all at once. This will be a several year process of selectively removing and treating these trees as the department sees fit and as funding um, becomes available for that work. Um, and just to note that typically in a um, 
in a park renovation project, if we do a removal of a tree, we try to replace it with a new tree. And for this project, because it's a pathways project, we don't have funding set aside for that, for replanting new trees, but we are pursuing other avenues to secure funding um, with, including with the urban forestry department and with the office of budget management to um, identify possible other venues to include new tree plantings to help offset some of the trees that may need to come out for this um, for these improvements. So that is it from me. Um, we can certainly go back through anything that I went over that was questionable. Um, Again, we'll, we'll we'll open this up to conversation now. And if anyone needs to hop off, just know that the meeting has been recorded and the presentation slides are up, going to be up on the website within a week. Thank you for listening. Any questions right off the bat? Heidi, um, let me ask you to unmute. You have um, pretty much, we, we walk in Dorchester Park and stuff, and we just noticed the signs there on the trees by out to Richmond Street. And there's such beautiful trees and I big, know. old, beautiful trees. So you've pretty much answered that you're trying really hard to um, preserve them as best you can. But uh, we just wanted to come and say how important it is to have a tree that's that old and that beautiful be and that healthy to be left alive um, if there's any other possible way to go around it. And I understand you've done a ton of work on this before we even got here, but we just wanted to voice our concern and our love for those trees. Absolutely. And I feel the same way that you do. Um, those trees are very beautiful and they're very important in the park. And um, there was, there is one tree that was identified that has a sign on it that we um, did further study of that's like right at the corner of this intersection that yeah. we, that we think that we can save. And it, it, even if it, but like I, I, that tree is not in this presentation any longer. So I will remove that sign from that tree. Um, we did further grading studies and thought maybe there's a way that we can really keep, we can keep that one. So anyway, that that's one tree that's not on here. But again, the other trees we're really gonna try to save as well. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for mentioning that. Anybody else out there? Brave souls? Nellie, I believe you have a question in the chat. Oh, thanks. Where, I, I do not have my chat. Could you read it for us? Could you read the questions in the order that they came in? Okay, so from, let me see, from Moo Bishop, is he he or she asked i'm not sure what um they asked was there an effort to have a plan that minimized tree removal yes great question absolutely um we have done um minimizing tree removals is the utmost important to the parks department and to our dla um we know that tree removals are um, we love trees they have so many benefits. Um, they're, they're our number one green infrastructure in the city. And um, this, this particular set of design um, construction documents and specifications will include a lot of protection measures for the existing trees so that the contractor is held to very specific requirements when working on the site with construction vehicles and material storage to minimize um, any type of impact to the existing trees, whether that be, you know, using different equipment, um, like smaller vehicles, um, 
like placement of material storage, site access, we certainly that is one thing that we really take seriously at the Parks Department. Okay, so the next comment from Richard said, there are two new trees that we planted close to tree number 30. Will they be protected? Close to tree number 30. I'm going to have to go out and look at those, but the answer I want to say is definitely yes. Um, I am not sure where they are exactly on this plan. If they're in the, if they're in conflict with the ramp, we would have a difficulty saving them. Um, do you know where, do you, um, let's see, I'm not sure what the best way to try to understand that is. I will, I, I will have to go out to the site and try to identify where those are and then follow up with Richard about that. Um, Nellie, really quick. Hi, everybody. Oh, I'm out of Hi, how are you? Um, I joined right at six, so I think that um, I just kind of snuck in, but I just wanted to introduce myself um, now and let any residents in the um, call know that I am the new Dorchester liaison. Um, I know Daw Park very well. I walk my dogs up there. I used to live on Hutchinson. Um, if anybody has any questions, I just want everyone to know that I'm a resource. Um, Nellie has kept me in the loop with everything, so there is a great line of communication going on between us. Um, and if there are any questions or any concerns um, that have to do with City Hall, the mayor's office, so want everyone to know that um, I'm more than willing to help answer them. Um, and also um, anything um, that I can pass along to Nellie or anything along those lines, um, just to let me know. I unfortunately do have to run now. I have a civic meeting, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows um, that I'm available if anything is needed. Thanks, Madison. No worries. Have a good night, guys. Um, there's a question about um, the cobblestone culvert. Um, that There's no plans to remove that. Ray, do you have any comments about that? We, um, with that new ramp, which we're now calling an alternate, um, we're actually adding additional cobblestone um, gutter along the ramp to catch water off the ramp and go into the catch basin. And so all that will be, um, will be, the existing will be um, repointed and reset and then we'll be adding new. Um, the other cobblestone gutters um, uh, um, most likely will not be addressed within this budget. We we have um, done some uh, regrading, which hopefully improves the drainage situation by by crowning the walkways rather than pitching them to one side. Um, that should break up uh, a lot of water coming down the hill. But um, yeah, so this area that's up on the screen right now will be. Um, will be fixed. Other areas uh, will probably need additional funding. All right. Thanks, Ray. Um, okay, we have there's, other... Yeah, there's another question from B. Simon. Um, he asked, how are you being respectful to Frederick, Frederick Law Olmsted's original landscape design? He was the most famous landscape architect in America. The park is listed in the National Registry Register of Historic Places because of his design. Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, so we're not changing the path, the park program layout pretty much at all. The only thing we're doing is adding accessible routes to the existing pathway system. So. Uh, we are being very respectful of the original shape of the park. Um, all we're doing is making it easier for folks in wheelchairs to get into it. Um, yeah, no, no, no other major program programmatic or landscape changes happening here. Okay. Um, was there another question? Um, I'm gonna pause on the chat and Rich because Richard has his hand raised. Oh yeah. 
There we go. Go okay. ahead, Richard. Um, I was involved with getting it on the National Register with Jane Boyer and Bill O'Connell. I probably took place probably 20 years ago, somewhere in that vicinity. So I think you've been fairly respectful to the general uh, layout of the park. I'm impressed with the fact that the that the new walkway down by the uh, ball field uh, will be on the upper side of that wall, which I don't think was an original wall to the park. I think that when that part of the park um, became a ball field, I think that was during the Work Progress Act in the 30s, actually. And uh, that stone wall, to my understanding, was put in at that time that holds the uh, soil back to the left of the diamond there and where you're going to be putting the new walkway. Um, if I were going to be doing a walkway the way that you were planning, I think I couldn't have come up with a better solution than what you have done there. So I, overall, I think that the, uh, the uh, plan is very respectful of the historical natures of the park. The pudding stone isn't being disturbed uh, one of the features that Olmsted like to to uh, show and encourage people to make themselves familiar with the faces of the stone cliffs, et cetera, there. Um, I'm surprised that you're unable to uh, budget for replacement of some trees, but given the fact that the trees that you're removing, except for one of the very large ones where the wall pathway is going to go down by the ball field, um, and the fact that you're already considering saving the large one um, at the corner by the upper side of the Richmond Street path, um, that's okay. I will also point out that probably 15 or 20 years ago, uh, myself and a number of people ran a number of galas uh, for the park and we currently have uh, some funding that's available that we would gladly uh, work uh, with the city of Boston uh, to expedite some of the removal of the dead and deceased trees there uh, and replace them uh, with a match or with some type of a percentage of the cost of being absorbed by us. I won't tell you how much money there is uh, because I don't want you spending all of it. But uh, it's a reasonable sum of money. Uh, if we were to figure that uh, we would like to probably, um, we've talked about it as a group, but the group is pretty much dysfunctional now. But uh, we have talked about bringing in uh, arborists under the direction of the city arborists uh, and have some work done in the winter months when we can get a better value for our dollar. So if you can get somebody from the Parks Department to reach out to me, uh, I can run it by the uh, kind of uh, ragtag bunch of people that, uh, that uh, were involved in raising the money uh, and see if we can uh, come up with something to, to move things along. But I think that you've been pretty sensitive uh, with the cobblestones, that was a, an issue that uh, one of our members uh, worked diligently to remove all of the waste that had covered that, um, um, that drainage pit. Uh, just where that pathway coming up from, Deutsch, from Richmond Street uh, takes a left and comes back into the existing path, there is a culvert that goes underneath the existing path with a uh, and it drains down into where you into the basin there where uh, number tree number 30 is. So uh, my understanding from Ray is that that uh, culvert will remain underneath the pathway and uh, come down. Three trees that we planted as a group, uh, oak trees, uh, uh, right of, in the general vicinity, they were replacing trees that had actually we had lost. And one is uh, 
just to the right of that culvert, uh, probably about 20 feet up from the Richmond Street path. And then, uh, so yeah, went right, not, almost, uh, I would guess, I don't see a scale, but I would, I would guess about 10 or 15 feet to the east of Tree 30, going close to the border of the, the park. So there yeah. was a large tree there on the other side of the culvert that was replaced. And then where you're pulling back in, uh, in that underground culvert that comes from that drainage ditch right there, uh, comes in, there's a new tree right here where we lost a tree. And then there is a new tree at the uh, Dorchester Avenue uh, entrance uh, outside of that circle on the right hand side. If you look at it, you can see it's actually caught on fairly well. The diameter and the uh, and the caliber of it, it went in at the same time as the other two, but it has done tremendously well out uh, by right in this area right here. It's right here underneath uh, underneath the canopy trees here just where that culvert is, we planted three dogwoods as uh, undergrowth in there. And those, uh, I look at them fairly regularly. They have suffered through some of the drought conditions over the last five or six years, but they're still very much alive, although the cat briar is starting to gather on them and so on. So um, one thing that when we used to have the goats in the park eating some of the poison ivy in the undergrowth there. The city had promised to maintain the areas that the goats cleared. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. And that area is uh, right here by the playground uh, where the poison ivy and the stone outcropping is right here. The goats did Richard, I just, I just want to let you know, we can't see your cursor. Um, oh, you can't see that, okay. No, so I'm kind of trying to put my mouse where I think you're yeah, talking well, you about. Point, you were doing a very good job, actually. Okay, so over here uh, somewhere. So uh, if we can get uh, somebody from the parks department to work with us, uh, we used to have quite a volunteer group uh, going yeah. through them and uh, taking out a lot of that cat prior and so on. But I have to say, uh, I'm the de facto president of the Dorchester Park Association. Uh, because we've never changed the things in the Secretary of State's office the way that we were supposed to. But um, and I do control the uh, the checking accounts and the CDs that we have that hold the money. Um, it's a little bit better than a hundred thousand uh, dollars that uh, we have sitting there that really ought to be utilized for some of the purpose that we raised it for. Uh, but we'd love to work with somebody and get some progress made on the park. So, absolutely. Thank you so sensitive. much. You've been sensitive, very sensitive, I think, to the to the uh, the Olmstead plan, which was a very important to us. The passive growth area, the passive green areas, and recreational areas on the park. The city's always managed to do the active ones, the playing fields, the, the little league field, the tennis courts the playground, uh, but the passive areas have been uh, over the years let go to hell. And um, we'd like to start improving those. That's Thank all. you so much. That, that, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, I'm all done. Okay, um, that's that's really great news. Um, I think maybe it would make sense for, for you and me to follow up after this meeting to maybe have a site walk together and we can look at the trees that you're talking about. Um, and also I think to having Todd Mister, the director of urban forestry on the call um, is a, was a great thing. And also you guys, we can also make sure that you guys are connected as um, Todd will help manage the um, canopy, the canopy management and like tree health improvement efforts that we um, we want to undertake and, and funding for that as well. So um, thank you so much for for letting us know that you are willing to work with us and that there's a potential partnership opportunity there. Um, Todd, let me know if you want to say anything too. You're welcome to. Um, let's see, I can ask to unmute you. Um. 
No, I, I don't need to partic- uh, say anything in particular other than uh, just to point out that prior to the issuance of the, uh, the release of the urban forest plan in 2022, uh, I will admit the urban forestry division was rather small. And honestly, we didn't do a lot of work in parks. And as was already pointed out, the passive area of this park was not well maintained. Uh, it, it is our goal in the coming years to, to pay more attention and to, to be more invested in that and proactive in the work that we do. Again, it's not going to be overnight. It's not going to be an instant thing, uh, but we definitely want to be more involved in uh, working with community groups that might be able to, or partner with community groups that might be able to uh, provide some, some labor in there, uh, whether that's funding for labor or you know through their own efforts. Um, again, partnerships are great. And in terms of planting new trees, I think we can, when this project is complete, we can look at ways of uh, finding spots to, to, to continue to build the canopy there. So we're, we're definitely open to that of uh, using some of our resources to make sure that we get some, some new trees growing there because we know we have to remove some to facilitate this work. Thank you so much, Todd. Question from Karen. put a question in the chat, but it got uh, oh. missed. It's all right. Um, I wanted to get a feel from uh, uh, from from Richard and Todd <clears throat> on uh, um, uh, uh, whether there are thoughts about the wisdom of diversifying the species because there was a time when having 95% oak trees was a fine idea, but now that we get invasive species that can come and wipe out an entire species, it's something that uh, um, I don't know is a factor when you get to the point of replanting with other trees. Are you gonna try and stick with the original uh, plant almost all oak trees or is is it have has anyone put thought into uh because it's really it's it's very it's it's oak and birch and uh that's about it that's all that's all i had i just wondered about that yeah um, Todd, did you want to speak about species at all, or should I handle that one? Um, no, I think um, I think we we are interested in in diversifying the canopy, and um, any any I, I think you know what. Depending on where the tree is, we would probably take a do an assessment of what make would make sense for that particular area, whether we wanted like a, if it was like a flowering tree that got removed, we would replace it with some, a native flowering tree, um, a big overstory canopy tree. If um, it was an oak tree and there was a abundance of oak, we would probably put something else that um, had the same ecological value and was part of the same eco region. Um, so a native plant, but maybe didn't drop as many acorns. So it's sort of like thinking about what the what the tree, what the tree's site specific constraints are, um, and then identifying the species from there. Um, but sure, certainly diversifying uh, the canopy and um, but still keeping within the native plant palette is something that we would definitely be considering. Any other comments um, from my team on that? Nope. Well, again, I would just say that, <clears throat> again, diversity is always a, a good point as we look to the future and we look to new thing, climate change and uh, invasive pests that may come along. <clears throat> Having a diverse uh, species uh, palette there would be, would be the most helpful. But we also want to be respectful to, again, as was mentioned, what was there and then any historical plan for the area. But again, at this point, I don't, I think it's probably a little premature to talk about individual species, but we can 
we're definitely open to conversations uh, when we're when we're engaging in that work. Thanks, Todd. Ooh, another question from Richard. I'm gonna ask it unmute. I, I I don't really have a question, but I was suggestive. I was uh, interested in the comment about how it's so heavily populated with oak trees and. Uh, I agree uh, that it's overly populated with oak trees. And uh, I don't know how many people in the group tonight are aware that oak and beech trees are related to one another in terms of their, um, their family group. And the beech trees that were in the park and are still in the park are suffering from um, a, uh, either it's either a fungus or a, uh, some type of a pathogen that is uh, eventually going to destroy all of those. So it is a wise idea to, to uh, change some of the varieties of tree. If you walk through the park, you can see that there were, obviously there were beech trees, not beech trees, but chestnut trees that grow up to about uh, eight or 12 feet at this point. But then uh, with, uh, with the blight that's, that is on chestnut trees, the native ones all kind of fell off the wayside probably about a century or a century, 120 years ago. Uh, but there are signs that the, those trees obviously were in there at one time. Uh, right now, the predominant trees obviously are oak. There are some locust trees that have kind of populated the area down on the, uh, on the southern trail there on the left hand side and those will come down in the first good storm that there is and they're not really a species that belongs there but it's there and there are cherry trees there as well um, but it would be uh, Lisa or Hearn as I was going to write there but I won't write it uh, is now the superintendent of uh, Milton Cemetery and she got a group of Boy Scouts uh, to come in one summer and to identify what species and varieties of trees there were in the cemetery. And when you have 100 distinctive uh, varieties and species and genuses of trees, you can be recognized as a small arboretum. And that opens up other avenues of funding in order to strengthen that. I mean, there is so much that can be done at the park. Uh, some of us that are in close to 70 years old, I mean, we, we lack the energy and the push to get these things done as we did 30 or 35 years ago. But if anybody is looking for an idea or a project for a group of kids, that might be something that they learn how to key out trees and identify them. And then we get the benefit of uh, getting the park recognized as a small arboretum, which I think would open up other avenues of funding and so on. So diversity is a good thing. Thanks, Richard. Those are great thoughts and a good, great idea. Thank you for sharing. Um, I wanted to just jump back to the chat because I found a chat from um, Mora that said, in the original plans, you had handicap access from Richview close to the ball fields. Um, this entrance is utilized by a lot of people and I don't see it in this plan as being part of the plan. And I just wanted to point out that we do have that in the plan. If I am if I understand where you're speaking about um, this entrance off of Richview Street, we do have um, a proposed um, accessible walkway in this in this location. Um, let's see, is it, it's, oh, I think there's, yeah, so the idea is that there's gonna be a accessible ramp coming down from from Richview that would allow folks to enter in here. Um, Maura, did you, does that answer your question? Um, or am I missing something? Um, Feel free to follow up with me too, if that would feel more comfortable. Um, but we, yeah, I think there was a point in earlier in the project where there was discussion of adding a, a ramp over on this side maybe. Um, and that was like a big zigzag ramp, but it ended up being cost prohibitive. 
And also it would require removing a lot of really beautiful, huge trees. Um, and so we felt that this solution, which is very close by and removes a lot less trees would be more appropriate um, for the site. Let me ask to unmute you, Maura. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I was just really concerned because that entrance is used by like so many, like the uh, flag football people, the baseball people. And, this one? Yeah, and uh -huh. so, many, so many people park up on Richmond St Richview Street to mm -hmm. access the ball field. Um, you know, we have like tons of people that come in and access from that area. And if you were handicapped, there's no way you're getting in that from Richview Street. Yeah, so the new um, proposed, um, the proposed plans do include an accessible ramp um, from from Richview Street that isn't currently there. Oh, okay. I just misunderstood your first comments at the beginning saying, you know, some of them weren't going to be done. So. Yeah, I, I, um, I think I might have said that down here on Richmond street, this, uh, this one that has a number two has been flagged as an area that we might not be able to afford adding a, a accessible ramp, um, to, and so that's a secondary budget focus area just because it's very close to two other um, accessible entrances, but the Richview Street North um, accessible ramp is still in the plans or, right well, now. That, that's, that's very good to hear. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> Three, yeah, we thought that wasn't important. We heard that that was a very important yeah. one. So I, just didn't, I just didn't see any signs on any of the trees in that area. So I just thought maybe they weren't gonna do that area. Yeah, so let me explain something about that. So the trees that are being removed because they have some, they're dead, dying, diseased, invasive, um, or have some kind of like structural integrity issue, we did not put signs on because those fall outside of the tree ordinance requirements to let the community know about them. Um, so let me make let me make sure that that I'm making sense there. So let's go to the last slide. So the only trees that have signs on them are the signs that are the trees that are in red because those are trees that are being removed strictly for design or or uh, are at risk of being removed for design purposes. The other trees, there's a couple up here at the top that are really not doing so well and um, have um, issues that that might that would require them to be removed just to, for for the um, structural integrity of the forest. Um, that that would also be that are also slated for removal, but kind of independently of the proposed ramp system. So it works out in our favor that they those trees need to be removed, but it's not because of the ramp. Does that make sense? It's because they yes. Yes. are they have yes. issues in and of themselves. So yeah. those trees are not identified out there with like this tree will be removed signs. Right. Great. You know, and my other comment in the chats and stuff was just about, um, um, and Richard brought some of that up also, uh, just about the condition of, you know, when you walk through um, the paths, you know, well, a lot of it, like where the crossroad goes, um, when you look through there, um, all these new trees are being strangled. So anything trying to grow is not able to grow because of the vines. They're just taking over the trees, all the new little trees. Um, you know, okay. so I just hoping that the forestry division would would, you know, somehow come in. I mean, walking through the park years ago, you used to be able to see almost from one side to another and you can't do that anymore. It's, you know, and, and we've actually even had problems up near the Richview Street entrance where we were just talking about there's a gentleman who's sleeping in the woods there every day. <laughs> yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Um, that's something we're aware of and um, we're trying to figure out how to address. Um, 
Are you talking about more? Are you talking about the trees, the newly planted trees that are over here along this central walkway, or are you no. talking about like volunteer species, like just part of the forest, like trees yeah. that are just popping up that are getting strangled? Yeah, where you've got the middle cross section, right in the very middle, where you've got that 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 connect. Yes, like all on both the left and right of that. I mean, basically more on the left of that. I mean, you look at the the trees that are trying to grow in there and they're being smothered. Okay. Um, we'll flag that for the um, for urban forestry and for um, potential investment opportunities for vegetative management in the park. It's can't be part of the improve this pathways improvements, but it doesn't mean that I can't communicate those specific issues to others um, who could help address them. Yes, yeah, because it was brought up also by Richard, like we had, they had the goats and stuff and they did eat a lot of that stuff, but then nothing was, you know, the, the vines were still there and nothing yeah. was pulled out. And I mean, they're like, like all these children are walking through that park to go to Pope John Paul's school and there's nothing but poison ivy all over the rocks along the walking path mm -hmm. you know it's pretty dangerous for ki for children with the poison ivy amount that's in that park okay thank you i know about the poison ivy because i got some on my foot when i was putting <laughs> up signs in the <laughs> shrubs behind the ball <laughs> yeah that's why it's difficult for like just regular people to go in and try and clear that out. I mean, basically right. you have to have a hazmat suit on to do that. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate it. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Um, okay, let's make sure we have all the other comments touched on. There's a comment about the trees at Richmond being um, ro robust and a majestic gateway. And I completely agree with you. Um, from from Greg and from um, also from let's see yeah uh, Heidi um, and I agree we'll certainly try to preserve those trees um, if we if that walkway does get built it's just really really tight in there as you know with like two houses on either side and a pretty steep grade change so what we really want to do is try to balance the needs of folks in wheelchairs with trying to preserve um, those existing trees. Uh, oh, so I certainly hear that and um, it is on our radar. Um, and a question about how much removal will affect the canopy. Um, noted, uh, any other questions? Closure of the hospital. Um, I don't think that that has any effect on this project right now. Um, if there's a specific question you want to clarify, let me know. Um, the bubbler, does anyone know whether the bubbler in the ball field does or not, does not have a lead time? Are we talking about the bubble, the, the field off of Adam Street or the one up from Hutchinson? Um, Oh, a lead line. Um, I do not believe that that bubbler has a lead line, but I can look into that and follow up with you about that, Jen. Let me just writing it down. Uh, okay, I think we got through. Okay, you were told a couple years ago it was lead. I will look into that. And then this is Moo and Jeff. Okay. Um, I just wanted to mention that yeah. comment about Kearney Hospital. Kearney Hospital. Oh, yeah. um, the the bottom of that question was, would it be possible to provide access from that parking lot um, to the park? And I would say, you know, we don't know what who who's going to be owning that property um at any particular time it's not it's not owned by the city so um but it could be explored later if the parks wanted to look at that 
I don't know. Yeah, parcel acquisitions are very, uh, is that what you're talking about? Or The parking like, lot, the parking the... lot of Kearney Hospital, a lot of people park mm -hmm. there near the ball field because there's no parking, not much parking on Hutchinson. And uh, and so they park back there. And I think there's a breach in the fence somewhere where the people walk through. But um, we this plan doesn't address that. It's helpful to hear that flag, though. This is Liza from Parks, just so that we can have that on our radar. If that if, you know, as that site is is. Changes hands and um, management. Uh, we can, yeah, we can see if if that access is lost or if it can be improved. Um, so thanks for flagging that and and let us know if anything changes because we may not know um, what you see immediately day to day. Thanks for jumping on that one, guys. Um, and then there was the last question I saw, and I I don't think I understood that question, so I appreciate you clarifying. Um. The yeah, the existing path, um, if the reach Richmond Street path ramp doesn't get built, it would just be the existing path would be there. Um, so the way that it currently is. Um any other questions? I'm gonna do it would be nice in Dorchester. Okay, I think it, and please correct me if I'm wrong that we have covered the questions in the chat and all of the raised hands. I see Jeff's hand is raised. I don't know if that's oh. raised from earlier. Oh yeah, you're right. Jeff, would you like to ask a question? If you're speaking, we cannot hear you. It does appear that you're unmuted from uh, from this side, but maybe the microphone input isn't working or something on on your end. If you want to try the chat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drop my, um, email in the chat and, um, Jeff, please feel free to follow up with me. I'm sorry. We couldn't hear you if you're speaking. Um, oh, <laughs> um, Please uh, let's let's connect after this, and I can I can give you my phone number, and we can chat over the phone, or you can um, ask me your question via email. Um, okay, great. If there are no further questions or comments, we will wrap it up there. And um, please feel free to get in touch with me if anything comes up um after this if you have any thoughts or questions and um again the presentation will be posted to the website in about a week and um i think that's i think that's it thanks liza and todd um and ray for joining and thank you shauna for for um for moderating for us and thank you so much all of you who took time out of your busy schedules to participate in this meeting we appreciate you